The Mario Kart series is one of Nintendo's most popular and best-selling series, with a combined sales total of over 178 million. Making its start on the SNES, Mario Kart was an instant hit, with each subsequent entry continuously adding and improving upon the original formula. Mario Kart 64 brought the series to 3D, Super Circuit brought it to handheld, Mario Kart 7 introduced gliding and underwater racing, but there's one Mario Kart game that's more notable than all the rest. One Mario Kart game that despite being released almost 10 years back, nailed the formula so well that it hasn't at all been followed up by a sequel and is still actively being played to this day, with its final update only releasing recently. That Mario Kart game is none other than the incredibly well-known Mario Kart 8. And for my 8th and final video in my series covering all the Mario Kart games, I want to take a deep dive into this ever so notorious entry and see what's made it hold up so well after almost a decade. My name is Mario Mikester and welcome to a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Retrospective. Initially released worldwide on May 30th, 2014 for the Wii U, and later re-released as an enhanced port for the Nintendo Switch on April 28th, 2017, Mario Kart 8 is the 8th entry in the Mario Kart series. Yeah, they got real creative with the names after Mario Kart Wii. Development for the game started in early 2012, with the team initially deciding on a drill that allowed players to dig and drive underground as the game's main gimmick. However, this idea was quickly scrapped when someone on the team suggested anti-gravity as a possible mechanic, as they found it to be a much more interesting and enticing concept than simply being able to dig a hole. Along with scrapping the drill mechanic though, sometime during development, the team had plans to finally add Kamek to the roster, a character that was originally planned for Mario Kart 64, but was replaced with Donkey Kong late into that game's development. Unfortunately, similar to Mario Kart 64, for some unknown reason, Kamek was scrapped again, with only his icon remaining deep within the game's files. Luckily though, Kamek was eventually added 9 years later in the Booster Course Pass, and about a year and a half into Mario Kart 8's development, we would finally get our first look at the game during E3 2013. This trailer not only showed off the brand new anti-gravity mechanic, but also confirmed the return of the gliding and underwater racing mechanics from Mario Kart 7. The big takeaway from this reveal though, had to be the visuals. I mean, for the consoles they released on, Mario Kart's prior to 8 never looked bad per se, but they definitely weren't pushing the limits of what we thought was possible graphically from Nintendo. This game however, was looking like it could be the most graphically impressive Nintendo game ever, and combine that with the hype of 7's gliding and underwater racing returning, the new anti-gravity mechanic, and just the fact we were getting a brand new Mario Kart, Needless to say, this trailer had people very excited for the game, and motivated the team to keep putting their all into this entry's development. From the very moment you open the game, Mario Kart 8 is already showing off by trumping all other Mario Kart title screens. Instead of just seeing the same image and hearing the same voice line every time you open up the game like every other Mario Kart's title screen, 8 decides that for some reason, that's not enough. In this game, you have a plethora of different possible title screens. You have some with Mario, one with Rosalina, one with Bowser, one with Link, but by far the absolute best and funniest has to be Luigi Kart A. There was literally no reason for Nintendo to put this much, hell, any effort at all into the title screen, but I absolutely love that they did. The title screen music here is also just a banger, and for the first time in Mario Kart history, isn't digitally composed, but is actually performed live by a big band and just makes it hit that much harder. There's even a part of the song that plays the title theme from Super Mario Kart, and it's just amazing. Heading away from the title screen though, and into the actual game itself, 
You have quite a bit of options here on the main menu. Single player, multiplayer, online play, wireless play, and some smaller options that let you do stuff like listen to the game's OST, look at your stats and replays, and even some Nintendo Labo integration that allows you to control the game with a Toy-Con creation. For now though, we're going to be starting off with the single player mode. Which brings us to the character roster, and oh my god. At the initial release of this game back on the Wii U in 2014, its character roster was much smaller, with half of the roster being locked behind completing certain cups. However, with the release of the two waves of DLC on the Wii U in 2015, the new characters added at the release of Deluxe in 2017, and the eight more new characters added in the Booster Course Pass in 2023, Mario Kart 8 went from having one of the weakest character rosters in the Mario Kart series, to having easily the best and most diverse roster in the entire series. Sure, there are some odd picks here like Baby Rosalina and the ever-infamous Pink Gold Peach, but they are more than made up for with the return of fan favorites like King Boo, Funky Kong, and Petey Piranha, as well as some of the newcomers like Kamek and Pauline. I also love how certain characters like the Yoshis and Shy Guys have different color variations you can choose for them, that even change their icon on the character select menu. Once you select a character though, you head into the cart selection. Here we see the return of the vehicle customization from Mario Kart 7, which allows you to individually choose which vehicle frame, wheels, and glider you'll use. When you initially reach this section, you'll only have access to a handful of different parts to use. However, just like in 7, by collecting coins and races, you'll gradually unlock more and more parts over time, until eventually you'll have more than you know what to do with. Seriously, after unlocking every cart part in the game, there are more than 8,000 possible combinations you can create. And just like I said when I was talking about Mario Kart 7 a while ago, allowing players this much customization is a double-edged sword in a lot of ways. On the positive side of things, it can be really fun for newcomers and veterans alike to have access to all these options in order to create some funny loadouts. And the sheer amount of unlockable parts can encourage you to keep playing the game with the goal of unlocking them all, and being able to experiment more with insane loadouts. But on the negative side of things though, shoving all these stats and thousands of possible combinations down a new player's throat can be incredibly daunting and make it really difficult for them to find a loadout that suits their playstyle. Regardless though, in the end, I do heavily prefer 7 and 8's cart customization over the older games's. It's not the best, but it's definitely a big step above what we had before. But enough about character rosters and cart customization, let's get into what really makes a Mario Kart game great. The track selection. At release, Mario Kart 8 had a respectable 8 cups under its belt, the standard for Mario Karts at the time. However, with the release of the DLC in 2015, it got another 4 cups upping its total track count to a staggering 48 unique courses. And I gotta say, the track selection here is pretty incredible. The new tracks here are some of the most creative and unique Mario Kart tracks in the entire series. And a lot of that is due to this game's brand new mechanic, Anti-Gravity. Anti-Gravity allows for absolutely insane track design. Physics just don't matter anymore. Levels can twist and turn to the track designer's will, and in turn lead to some really cool moments in some courses. Like in Shy Guy Falls where the anti-grav allows you to scale up a giant waterfall then shoot back down it at mock speed. Or in Mount Wario where the anti-grav literally lets you drive on the side of a giant running dam. The only real gripe I'd say I have with the anti-grav is that a lot of the time, despite you literally being upside down or completely sideways, the camera just doesn't reflect that, and it can sometimes take away from the craziness of it all. The Mario Kart TV replays, though, do a very good job at showing off the anti-grav. Speaking of the new tracks, though, outside of their design or use of this game's mechanics, their theming is just amazing. One of my favorite tracks in the game, Sunshine Airport, is not a favorite of mine because of its design or anything, but just purely because of the fact that it's an airport-themed Mario Kart track, and I think that that's a super cool and original idea. Same goes for courses like Mario Kart Stadium and Toad Harbor. The atmosphere and vibes of these tracks is just so good. And combine that with the amazing visuals, it's no wonder a lot of us still enjoy these tracks after over 9 years. I mean honestly, I'd say of the 16 brand new tracks in this game, 
there are only two stinkers here. Those being Bone Dry Dunes and Rainbow Road. Bone Dry Dunes is just kind of boring in my opinion. I've never been a huge fan of desert tracks, but this one in particular is bottom of the barrel. The slippery sand road along with the horrendously sharp turns just made this track not at all fun to drive on. The red sand aesthetic never really caught on for me. The layout is just random. And the anti-gravity section doesn't add anything to the track and doesn't even need to be there in the first place. The only reason this track exists in the first place is because Nintendo thinks for some reason that every Mario Kart needs a desert track, when in reality we should only get one if they have a good idea for one. Rainbow Road, on the other hand, isn't as bad as Bone Dry Dunes, but it's also not up to par with all the other tracks in the base game. I think the main reason this Rainbow Road fails is that it deviates way too far from what a Rainbow Road should be. Don't get me wrong, the Space Station theme is incredibly cool, and when it's done well in this track, it's done well. But honestly, that theme would work so much better as its own track. Because here, while you do have those Space Station elements, since it's trying so hard to be a Rainbow Road, you miss out on so many of the potential course elements a Space Station themed track would have. At the same time though, since it's still partially trying to be Space Station themed as well, it just gives the track this man-made feel, which is not at all what a Rainbow Road should be. It's missed potential on both sides in a lot of ways, which in the end leads to a track I don't hate because it does have some cool elements, but also one I don't exactly love because of the contradicting themes. On a more positive note though, we have the Retro Tracks. Retro Tracks have been a staple of Mario Kart ever since DS, or as some would argue, Super Circuit, and in all games that featured them up to this point, there wasn't much done to change these tracks to take advantage of the new game's mechanics or make them fit in with all the new ones. They were just kinda there and it made it incredibly obvious which tracks were new and which were returning. In Mario Kart 8, however, they went one step further with the retro tracks, and instead of just bringing them back, they completely revamped them. A track like Toad's Turnpike from Mario Kart 64, which was originally a pretty boring and uninspired figure eight course, with basic cars on the road as its obstacles, is made much more interesting in Mario Kart 8. With the track receiving a beautiful visual overhaul, cars that you can trick and glide off of, and an anti-gravity section on the side which allows you to drive on the wall, speeding across boost pads. Wario Stadium now has an anti-gravity and underwater section, Rail Raceway is visually overhauled and is genuinely one of the best looking tracks in the entire game, SNES Donut Plains 3 was given a bunch of shortcuts and new paths to make it feel less flat and boring, GBA Mario Circuit has a raised up anti-gravity section, it's so cool to see these tracks given as much care and polish as the new ones, especially in the visual department. I mean, just look at what an SNES track looks like in Wii compared to A. The step up in effort is very apparent. The shining star of this game's retro selection though, and the one Nintendo loves so much they put it on the box art of the deluxe version, is N64 Rainbow Road. This track is technically the very final course of the base game, and what a finale it is. The music, the visuals, and even the revamped design of the course is just absolutely jaw-dropping. Sure, it's a bummer that the track was made into a section-based course, making it so you only get to go around it once, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's just a blast to race on. It's quite ironic that the best Rainbow Road in the base game, and the one that takes the best advantage of the anti-gravity mechanic, is a remake of a Rainbow Road from an N64 game. But hey, that's just how it is sometimes. Overall, the revamps to the retro courses in this game make them look and feel a lot less like old tracks to new players, while also allowing veteran players to see their favorites from past Mario Karts in a whole new and visually stunning light. But that's just the tracks from the base Wii U game. Available as paid DLC for the Wii U version, and just included for free in the Deluxe Switch version, Mario Kart 8 also has another 4 cups. What's interesting about this DLC though, is apart from the amazing brand new tracks and the absolutely stellar retro tracks included here, it also features some courses based on other Nintendo franchises like Animal Crossing, F-Zero, and The Legend of Zelda. This is so cool. You wouldn't expect Mario Kart courses based on Animal Crossing or Zelda to fit in or even be designed well, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. 
The way these courses slip in elements from their franchises, like the coins being rupees in the Zelda track, or the items in the air being held up by red balloons on the Animal Crossing track, do a really good job at making these franchises be represented well, and just in general show the amount of thought that was put into them. And I mean, the F-Zero tracks, they fit right at home here. I'm honestly surprised it took them this long to include them in a Mario Kart game. They are incredibly fun courses to race on, especially at high speeds. And speaking of high speeds, how could I forget about the brand new CC introduced in Mario Kart 8? 200cc. At release, Mario Kart 8 originally only had the 4cc options we come to expect in Mario Karts. 50, 100, 150, and 150 mirror mode. However, as part of an April Fool's joke update in 2015, Mario Kart 8 would receive a brand new speed class, 200cc. Apart from being incredibly difficult to control, but a lot of fun to master, this speed class completely broke some of the tracks in the base game. I mean, you literally clip into the ceiling on Music Park after going off the glider ramp. And on tracks like Dolphin Shoals and Mario Kart Stadium, the speed you have allows you to completely fly over shortcuts you would only usually be able to cut with mushrooms. 200cc is a lot of fun in my opinion. I love just flying across tracks at an absolutely absurd speed, and cutting all these shortcuts that just aren't possible in the lower classes. Although I can understand why a lot of people hate it. As on slippery tracks like Cheeseland or Sherbetland, it can be incredibly difficult to stay on the track, even if you have mastered brake drifting. In the end though, I think 200cc was a really cool thing to just randomly drop in an update, and I really hope we see it and maybe even a possible 250cc mode in the next Mario Kart game. In terms of items, this game features an incredible variety of them. You obviously have the staples of every Mario Kart like the green and red shells, star, mushrooms, bullet bill, and blue shell, but you also have some more obscure returning items like the feather from Super Mario Kart, although it's exclusive to battle mode, and the boo, which was missing ever since Mario Kart DS. In terms of new items though, you got the Piranha Plant which speeds you up eating almost anything in its path, the Boomerang Flower which you can throw in front of or behind you with three uses, the Crazy 8 which replaces the Lucky 7 from Mario Kart 7, just adding one more item, and probably the coolest new item in the game, the Super Horn. A horn that, when used on a blue shell, completely destroys it. Ever since its debut in Mario Kart 64, the blue shell has always been the most controversial item in the series. Some find it incredibly unfair and the thing to always ruin their race right before they're about to win, while others find it to be the item that balances the game, stopping skilled players from getting too far ahead of the pack, and humbling them. With the addition of the super horn though, and it being possible to roll as an item in first place, players now have a way to avoid the shell. And I think this was Nintendo's way of appeasing both crowds, by not completely removing the blue shell, but nerfing it a bit. But while the blue shell is a controversial item that's loved by some and hated by others, Mario Kart 8 introduces one more new item that is universally hated by almost everyone. The coin. Returning from Super Circuit and Mario Kart 7, coins were littered along tracks. With each coin you picked up gradually increasing your top speed with the max you could hold at once being 10. In Mario Kart 8, coins return and function exactly like they did in that game. They're littered across the track and you can only hold a max of 10. However, along with this, you can now receive a coin as an item in the item roulette, with it being extremely common in first place. The coins were a big issue in the Wii U version of Mario Kart 8, as you could only get one item at a time then, and if you were in first and needed a defensive item but instead got a coin, you were kinda screwed. In the Switch version, however, while coins still were an issue, the ability to hold two items at once now did remedy it a little bit. Speaking of version differences though, I think it's time we talk about one of the things Mario Kart 8 did the worst and 8 Deluxe did the best. Battle Mode. Following Mario Kart 64, which many believe to have featured the best battle mode in the series, the mode just seemed to be getting less and less attention in each new entry. I mean, don't get me wrong, none of these games battle modes were bad per se, I quite enjoyed Double Dash and DS's, but they definitely weren't doing much new with it. With Mario Kart 8's however, they literally just gave up. You only have one mode here, 
Balloon Battle. And instead of battling on courses specifically made and designed for the mode, you battle on Moo Moo Meadows. Yeah. They literally just took 8 tracks from the base game that you could go through backwards or normally, and called it a day on the mode. These tracks were not at all made for this, and a lot of the time leads to matches feeling incredibly empty and boring. The Wii U version's battle mode literally just looks like Nintendo forgot to add the mode, and like a day before release realized, and just threw together the most boring and uninspired battle mode in the entire series. It's honestly embarrassing, and by far everyone's biggest flaw with the Wii U game. With 8 Deluxe, however, Nintendo took the battle mode criticism to heart, and put their absolute all into 8 Deluxe's rendition of the mode. Instead of dumbass Moo Moo Meadows and Dry Dry Desert as the battle tracks, we instead got five brand new and three returning battle tracks. Those being Battle Stadium, Sweet Sweet Kingdom, Dragon Palace, Lunar Colony, 3DS Woohoo Town, GCN Luigi's Mansion, SNES Battle Course 1, and Urchin Underpass. Along with that, rather than just getting the basic ass balloon battle as the only mode, 8 Deluxe instead has five unique modes. The most in the series, with those modes being Balloon Battle, Renegade Roundup, bob on Blast, Coin Runners, and Shine Thief. And, as I mentioned earlier, 8 Deluxe also sees the return of the Feather item from Super Mario Kart, which is exclusive to this mode. I absolutely adore 8 Deluxe's battle mode, and it's a shame no one talks about or even plays it that much anymore. The physics are done incredibly well, and makes things like doing a quick U-turn feel quick and snappy. The music is top-notch, as is all music in this game, and the sheer amount of modes and maps offer a great variety here, with each mode honestly being super fun in their own right. The completely brand new mode here, Renegade Roundup, is so underrated. It's a blast to try and hide away to avoid being caught by the piranha plants. I can obviously see why even after 8 Deluxe completely revamped 8's battle mode and made it so much more diverse and original, that many still consider 64's to be the best, but man is 8 Deluxe's battle mode just an absolute joy, and in my opinion, the best in the series. Moving on though, we have the online, and it's done super well here. I love the ability to either play globally online against everyone to up your overall global score, open a quick room with friends, or join a tournament that focuses on a specific rule set like no items or pure 200cc. I also really appreciate the change to worldwide races, where now instead of letting you pick from the entire game's track selection before a race, you only get the choice between three randomly selected tracks, or just random. It stops people from struggling to know what courses they want to pick, especially with 8 Deluxe's insane amount of tracks, and helps races start faster as the timer isn't always run out because everyone was stuck on what track they wanted. In terms of the actual online itself though, it's one of the better Nintendo games likewise. I'm almost never experiencing connection issues when I play online, although it does still happen sometimes. Overall, online multiplayer in this game is good, and offers a great way to test your skills and see how many points you can accumulate over time. Mario Kart is a series that's been around for a long time, and with each new entry, we are continuously given new tracks, characters, and mechanics, and after a couple years, a new entry comes along, and replaces, or at least improves upon the last entry in some way, further refining the Mario Kart formula. With Mario Kart 8, however, they practically perfected this formula. The visuals are easily the best in the series, and honestly to this day remains one of the best looking Nintendo games. The physics are polished and refined and gives them this modern but still Mario Kart feel. The mechanics are original and have so much potential. The tracks are incredibly well designed and take great use of the mechanics potential. There's an outstanding amount of variety in the items and they're all balanced pretty well to still make Mario Kart feel chaotic, but fair. The release of the DLC in 200cc in 2015 added so much more content and replayability to the game. Deluxe's release fixed battle mode and introduced new items and characters. And of course the booster course pass, which I go a lot more into detail about in a video that will be featured on the end screen of this video, doubled the amount of content the game had, even if its quality wasn't up to par with the base game. Even with its flaws, it's hard not to look at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as the perfect, or at the very least, 
definitive Mario Kart experience. There's so much content here that it makes all the other entries look primitive in comparison. Each Mario Kart in and of itself is a unique experience on its own, and one will never completely replace or make another obsolete. But when it comes to the Mario Kart that does practically everything right, and is a real testament to what the series embodies, there's no other entry I can think of that comes anywhere close to reaching the heights of this game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe isn't just the best Mario Kart, it's the best racing game out there. I cannot wait for the day we see this game succeeded by a Mario Kart 9 or Mario Kart X, because it has some giant shoes to fill. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a certified masterpiece.